Good morning, folks, and welcome to the Equinox. NASA's solar images are glitching out once again, not appearing on the websites, but as before, Lockheed and HelioViewer are on point. We've got lots of plasma filaments, but not much in the way of an active region. We do begin to see the emergence of brighter areas, signifying where the magnetism is trying to begin the next solar cycle. But more relevantly for us now is the coronal holes. We're magnetically connected to the lead, whose solar wind will arrive at Earth within about two days. And around that time, Earth will magnetically connect to the northern opening, still coming in from the left. The solar wind events began pitifully overnight, as over on the right you see a little jump up in telemetry, but it jumped from the low end of ambient quiet to merely the higher side of normal range, not up into anything more, geomagnetism slowly stirring, but again, the stream was weak. Top weather event of the last day was the inundation in Manitoba. Some of the shots out of Winnipeg show fantastic flash flooding results from the deluge. This will continue in the central states and again up into Canada tonight as just west of the storm line, we're going to get weather delivered that will feel very much like winter here on the first day of northern fall. What you're aiming to see here is the line of storms coming off the Baja tropical system and shooting up a convergence line through the states. Notice on the wind map forecast for tonight, how not only does the air crash together along that storm convergence, but west of the convergence, the air is coming from the north, which is what's going to nip the Rockies there. Across the world, southern Japan and South Korea are bracing for impact. This typhoon is going to be a rough one. Eyes open there. Folks, it would appear we have another dust event ongoing. In this morning's run and going through the next three days, we are expecting continued contribution of dust from the Sahara and the westward march of the dust over the water. Let's go out to the Andromeda galaxy with Hubble, our sister galaxy. And actually, it'll be one of its dwarf satellite galaxies, down there the bright spot just below it. That is M110, and while its core is off-centered here to show the dusty, cold, dark molecular cloud that is obscuring part of its mass, this seemingly dead and boring galaxy was just discovered to have significant young blue star life at its bright core on the right. Up next, folks, we're going back to this Plasma Magnetic Sun paper today for some smaller scale. Yesterday, it was the large-scale helicity injections, but today, it's how the pre-sunspot region almost convects upward with the growth of the global magnetic field effect in the region, causing more helicity to flow into the region. Well, if that's not a more electrical description of how low-pressure Earth spot storms form, I'll be a monkey's uncle's donkey. The convection of laterally flowing material, the spin and helicity set into the region, and of course, the increase in electromagnetism as the global electric circuit uses these electrodes. We know this works for interplanetary fields from coronal hole streams that go through the solar system, and apparently, there is a coronal circuit at work for the sunspots, just like the global electric circuit on Earth. Last but not least, a tremendous paper identifying both the potential danger and potential benefit of space weather driven magnetic fields. While they may be able to tweak these and one day use them for medicine, the ELF they studied is also emitted by Earth's magnetic field at the surface during just about all space weather and geomagnetic events. They're describing human cellular responses, free radical effects, everything from forced expression evolution to cancer. Chapter 6 of our book deals with space weather and human health. The book overall teaches you how to predict earthquakes and fully breaks down the solar forcing of the terrestrial climate, including on tropical storms. And we've got one box left. Folks, the third edition of the book has been requested for next year, and we are going through the last of the second editions that will ever be printed. We greatly appreciate your support. We've got wind map forecasts and shots of our star to close. We'll do this all again tomorrow right here, but right now it's 5.15 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.